Welcome to another episode of Don't Panic Geocacher, a channel devoted to helping you solve mystery geocaches and teaching you more about how to solve them. My name is Arjen and I go by waterfan 5 on the geocaching.com website. Today's episode is a little bit special. I'm not going to go over a specific technique. I'm actually going to explain one of my puzzles in detail, but I will do it in such a way that you will get hints first about how to solve them so that you can choose when you want to uh, turn the video off and maybe continue solving it by yourself or how many hints you want. But at the end of the video, you will know all the steps involved in solving this mystery cache. So as I mentioned, um, you can safely watch and it will be very clear when hints will be given. So if you just want to see the first part, um, you can just go and watch and not have any hints. And then it will go into each of the steps. Now, this puzzle has uh, three different steps that you need to do. So, and each step will be hinted at independently. So if you're stuck at a certain level, then you can go to that specific step and get the hints for that step. Or if you only want a hint for the beginning part, you can only watch the beginning Try more yourself and then go on with the rest of the puzzle. If you need more hints, you can watch the next step of the video and so on. For each step, I will tell you how many hints I will give and I will give the hints and then it will break for the explanation of what the hints meant. After that, I'll work out the puzzle or that step of the puzzle. So there's a break between each step, so you can allow you to stop. So if you say, okay, I only wanted to know the first part, then you can stop right there, and then you can try solve the rest again by yourself. So um, you can choose how many hints you want or how little hints you want. So I mentioned there's three steps here, so by the end we'll solve the entire puzzle. So. We're now going to step one, and I'm gonna talk about the hints for step one. If you don't want any hints, this is the time to hook up, uh, hook off and stop listening. Of course, subscribe and like the, the video would be highly appreciated. You can also take a look at the other videos that I have in the channel that will talk about mystery caches. Okay, so let's take a look at the puzzle. As I mentioned, it's called Pyramid Discovery. It's a four star difficulty, and so that means that it's a pretty tricky puzzle. Uh, more than one step will be involved. Already mentioned, in this case, three distinctive steps will need to be done uh, to solve this puzzle. Of course, a puzzle by me. Uh, I only talk about my own puzzles in my videos, I'm not spoiling anybody else's puzzles. I always use my own puzzles as examples. It's not a field puzzle, and uh, the other thing to check here is the checker. We open it, we see that we're looking for exact coordinates required. So not a keyword, uh, we're looking for coordinates that will be this puzzle. Now, what is the puzzle? Uh, not giving away any hints yet, just describing what the puzzle is. Not at the posted coordinates, so this is always important to check, because if it doesn't say that with newer puzzles, there's a good chance it will be at the posted coordinates. But this is not a field puzzle, it's also not a trick, so we have to actually solve the puzzle to get the coordinates. The find, however, will be easy. The difficulty is purely related to the puzzle itself. So let's read the flavor text. Uh, often there might be hints in there. So, dear professor, I think I made a major discovery. I found this tiny pyramid and I think it reveals the location of a real Egyptian treasure. Maybe even an undiscovered pyramid. I took the effort to write out all the hieroglyphs for you and hopefully you can decipher it and we can make a huge discovery. See attached picture. That's the picture that you see right here. So we can open it and we can see it in more detail. Going back, the response from the professor. Dear John, ach, you made it way more difficult for me than it needed to be. Next time, just take pictures. And also, it doesn't give the location of a pyramid in Egypt, it's the location of a geocache in Rome, Georgia. So, that is the puzzle. That's the puzzle that we need to solve. So, um, yeah, now let's uh, can go try and solve it. Or you can go into the hint section and take some of the hints for each of the particular steps. 
So for step one, there's only one hint. So I will go to the hint next. This first hint is that clearly there's an Egyptian theme. So what you need to do is try finding an ancient Egyptian related alphabet. And as I mentioned, this is the only hint. So if you want, uh, don't want to see anything more, you can pause right now or stop the video right now and I will go next to the explanation. Okay. The explanation is that was clearly a font used and that we need to do a substitution with that font. So you will see it right here. There's many different variants. Um, I downloaded one from a website called The Font. And you see that every letter corresponds to a specific alphabet. Now, these are actually the uppercase ones. I actually used mostly the lowercase ones uh, in it. But we see that there is 26 uh, different characters, but some of them are the same, like U and V and C and K are the same. So that is what you need to do. You need to do the explanation. So next, I will show you and I will demonstrate that I will do the substitution myself where each symbol is now substituted with its corresponding letter. Okay, so we've learned that we need to do a substitution of each symbol with its corresponding letter. Um, if you've paid attention, then you may have seen that um, it's actually um, 26 individual uh, characters are listed here first, just two rows of 13. So if you would have counted four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, the second one is also 13, 26. It's a pretty good number, right, for an alphabet, especially since a lot of them are unique. There's some duplicates right here, and we'll see that they are in logical places in the alphabet. The same here, the third, and the 11th are the same, which is actually the C and the K. So in this font, they are represented by the same symbol. Now, using a little tool here to make it slightly easier, it uh, will do some uh, detection. If the picture is similar enough, then it will replace it with the same character. So here, the first one, it's an A. As I mentioned, it makes it easy because it's an alphabet. B, so no other Bs. C, well, we already knew that right here, this was another C here, and then there is a few more here in the picture itself, right? So it will place those. We just have to make sure to skip the K right there. And so on. So we do this B, B, F, B, H, I. J, this is the K, so it skips K. And then this one becomes L, right? And then this one becomes M. Now we see here letters appear, um, nothing really readable yet, right? So we'll go on, do the rest as well. And uh, if we've done everything correct, then all of them should be replaced. O, B, Q, R, Q. And here we see the next duplicates is where the U and the V are actually the same letter here, so we have to pick which one we want to do here. But we see we've almost all used, so this will be the W, because we have to skip one. Um, and we see if we've actually, the last three letters uh, don't seem to be used. So right now we have decoded the entire text, and so we can write out the text as we see it here. We can write it out and we have completed step one. We're now going to look at step two. Step two has a series of hints. There's actually five total, and you can choose when you want to stop watching if you feel that you have enough or want to try some more. I will tell you each time that I switch.
So here come the hints. The first hint, this is in general a good idea when you work with puzzles with text, is that you switch to a so-called monospace font. A monospace font is where every character uses the same amount of space. This allows you to see patterns that otherwise might be hard to see. An example of such a font is Courier New, which is common font on all machines installed. All. And if you do that, it will often help you with solving text-based puzzles. That's the first hint. Going to hint number two. So now we've placed it in this font. And so what you now may notice is that it's often worth to see things from a different angle. Maybe you see something familiar. So you see, for example, here that it's a nice square. Maybe that will help you. Going to the next hint. The text mentions that the assistant made it more difficult by writing it down and that taking pictures would be easier. Now think about what those pictures would have looked like. So how can we write these down and what would we write it down on? What would those pictures have looked like that the assistant would have sent? Next, always important to check is what extra information is on the page. In this case, the background image was carefully selected and is a hint on how to solve the puzzle. And the last part is always count everything. If you count things, you may discover, again, hidden patterns that are important to solving the puzzle. And so in this case, I recommend counting everything because you may see something that is important. So next, I'll go into the explanation of the puzzle. So step two is probably the trickiest part and the main part of this puzzle. Once you have done step two, the final part should be relatively straightforward, but uh, you may still struggle there as well. So I'll explain what step two and how the hints could be applied. Now I mentioned that you should always count everything, right? The pyramid in the picture, in the background picture, had four sides and each level had five, uh, five layers and 15 blocks total, kind of like this. So if you imagined what the pictures would have looked like from each side, you would get four different pictures. So like this. The professor mentions that it would be easier for him to have if he had just seen the pictures, so that he could place them maybe exactly like we see here. But instead, what the assistant did is wrote down the information, making it trickier because we lost the structure of how the letters were organized. We didn't see that anymore. And that structure here is important. So what we're going to do is we're going to place the letters back in this structure as how they would have appeared on the pyramid one side at a time. So we take the letters that we received and we write them down in the pyramid like this. So we have those four lines, each are 15 and each of them fill a specific pyramid. So you fill first pyramid, second pyramid, third pyramid, fourth pyramid. And so now we have kind of worked out that step. Because at this point, we have all the uh, step two completed. And now we need to go to the last step. Now I will go over step three. Step three has two hints, and after that I will again explain what the step three is, and I will work it out, which will then lead to the final uh, part of this puzzle, and you will have the solution to this puzzle. So with that, um, let's go to the first hint. Remember that word that you saw earlier? So when you had to look from a different angle, can you find that word again? So take a look at the pictures and see if you see a familiar word. 
Next hint. When a hieroglyphs were actually a phonetically sounded alphabet. That is actually relevant for this puzzle as well. So that's the end of the hints, and now I will go into the explanation of what you need to do. So read all the text layer by layer. Uh, put spaces uh, where it makes sense. Um, the numbers are more or less written phonetically. So if we do that, we see here what you need to do. You need to layer by layer, you need to read it. And kind of think about when you see, for example, the word four, that it's actually the number four. So we see here three, TRI, three, four, which is the coordinate here we're looking for. So if we work that out and say it out loud, north three, four, and go on, W A N one, five, zero, six, one, west, nil, and so on, right? So at this point, um, yeah, you have completely solved the puzzle, and so you get the context here above, and now you can convert that to a coordinate, and the checker will give you green. So that was the end of this video. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please like and subscribe if you thought it was useful. Um, there's many other videos on this channel that talk about puzzles. I will solve a lot of my own puzzle caches in the videos. Um, also demonstrate a lot of different puzzle techniques and teach you a very structured approach on how to solve a lot of mystery caches. Um, the best watch on the laptop or a computer because um, I use a lot of screen space um, plus puzzles in general are easier to solve on a laptop or a computer anyway. If any feedback, please feel free to comment or uh, contact me. I can be reached as waterfan5 on the geocaching.com website, or um, you can email me at geocacher.waterfan5 at gmail.com. With that, it's the end of the video. Um, hope you had a good time. Hopefully it will help you maybe even find this cache. Uh, who knows? Um, with that, I'll sign off and hopefully next time you see a mystery cache, it will make you panic a little bit less.